How are we doing this morning? Good? Three of you are good. That's brilliant. I'm doing well. Um, what an amazing morning with baptisms this morning. What an encouragement to see um, people make that amazing commitment uh, to God. Really, really cool. Um, one honour is to speak to you this morning. I'm Josh. If you don't know me, I'm the worship pastor here. So I often play guitar up there. But it's a pleasure to speak to you uh, from this platform down here. And as I all said, we're finishing our series on faith over fear. So we've looked at fear of missing out, fear of being known, and fear of failure. And today I'm going to be looking at the fear of God. The fear of God sounds pretty heavy, right? Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Participation is really helpful. Um, what, does role play, what, does, what role does fear play in our society today? Well, I think society is rife with fear. People are afraid to leave their homes. It feels like worldly fear and anxiety have a hold on this nation. Even the news is spreading fear. Um, a study recently showed that 73% of adults have feelings of intense worry or anxiety each day. There are around 20% of those feeling anxious or worried most or all of the time. But friends, there is hope. This kind of fear is not the fear that God wants us to have for him. This, this perfect love biblically promises to cast out these fears. So let's pray. Yeah, God, thank you um, for your presence here this morning with the baptisms and uh, the worship. And I just pray that your presence is, it falls really heavily here as I speak to uh, the congregation this morning. Just, we just pray for your spirit right now to fall on us and fall in this room. Amen. So what is the world's view of fears? Well, an easy example would be phobias. Studies show that over 60% of adults have a phobia or irrational fear. I'm sure we have some examples in the room of fear of heights, fear of the dark. Any more examples of fear, phobias? Spiders, moths, like that. Moths, moths are horrible, yeah, I know, I agree with that. Um, mine is sharks. Photos, videos, uh, even this guy who's up there, Bruce, terrifies me to this day. I can't even watch Funny Nemo, it freaks me out. Um, so what, what is a phobia? Well, it's an irrational or unreasonable fear. Now, realistically, in Ipswich, I'm never actually going to see a shark, hopefully, fingers crossed, and definitely won't decide to go swimming with one. But this, is, this kind of fear, my fear of sharks, is not the type of fear that we should have for the Lord. Our fear of the Lord is rational and reasonable based on who we know he is. So what does this fear of God look like then? Well, I think there's like two types of fear. So this worldly fear is the fear that drives us away. And there's a fear of God that draws us in. God never wants to drive us away. The fear of the Lord draws us in like a child to their father. A, a, fear, of our, a fear out of our respect and dependence on him. So my example of these two different types of fear uh, would be a twister. They've got a photo of a twister coming up somewhere. Don't know what, what better a twister or a tornado, but a very big, scary twister. And there's sort of two reactions when people see something like this. They either run and hide, which with the size of that twister, I don't blame you. It's going to be pretty scary. Or people are drawn in by the awe and wonder of nature. And I want to ask you today, when God shows himself, do we run away, do we hide, or do we stand in awe and adoration? To admire and adore the Lord is to fear him in the way that he deserves, is to respect him, to not be afraid of him, to want to be close to him, to know him. Being afraid of the Lord and having a fear of the Lord are two very different things. So biblically, what does fear of the Lord look like? Well, I want us to look at a verse, uh, Deuteronomy 10, verse 12 to 13. If you have a Bible, feel free to get it out. Um, yeah, Deuteronomy 10, 12 to 13. If you don't have a Bible, please come chat to me or anyone you've seen on stage um, at the end of the service and we'd be happy to give you one. Deuteronomy 10, verse 12 to 13. And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God ask of you but to fear the Lord your God? To walk in obedience to him, to love him, to serve him. To serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. And to observe the Lord's commands and decrees that I'm giving you today for your own good. So what do we learn from, from this passage? Well, I think there's three things we can take from this passage. The first thing is that obedience is the key to having a fear of God. The second is we must love the Lord to fear him. And the third is we must walk with him and know him to fear him. So obedience, love, and knowing him. Let's break this down one by one. So obedience, the verse says, what does the Lord your God ask of you but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to him? In order to fear God, we must let God's will be more important than our own plans. We must be obedient to God's perfect plan and will in order to respect him. The definition of obedience is submission to another's authority. I don't know about you guys, but I'm very okay with submitting to God's authority. It says in the Bible, God has authority over all things. So to fully fear and respect him is to submit to his perfect authority. So that's the first part, obedience. Then to love the Lord is to fear him. Uh, the verse here says, to walk in obedience to him and to love him. 
We must love the Lord with all our heart. It's a biblical command and it's an honour. When we give all of ourselves to God, when we love him with everything we have, we lose nothing and we have everything to gain from him. Ephesians 3 verse 17 to 19 says, I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have the power together with all of the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide, how long and how high and how deep the love of, of Christ is. And to know that love and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of the fullness of God this is how much God loves us the depth of his love surpasses our human knowledge his love is incomprehensible so we in return must love him with everything we have regardless of our brokenness or imperfection uh, God wants to spend time with us because he loves us that deeply like the verse said but he wants all of us he doesn't want part of us he wants every part of our being to fully respect and love God is to give him everything we have in everything we do. To love him with everything we have is to fear him in the way that he deserves. So obedience, loving him, and finally knowing him. People often today are far too familiar with a God they don't really know. Society know about God, they know about religion, they know about rules and all these things, but they don't know who God is. They don't know what he's like. To respect someone and have a relationship with them and to fear them, you must know who they are. Therefore, to know God, we must, sorry, therefore, to fear God, we must know him. So how do we get to know God better then? Well, the verse says, by following his commands and decrees, through prayer, reading the Bible, spending time with people who know the Lord really well, being in church, it's a good job. Doing all these things help us fear God. And fear requires respect. A true respect requires you to know someone fully. An example in my life is I really respect Amari Hutchinson, Ipswich Town footballer. Any Ipswich fans in the house? Yes, ignore the result yesterday. Um, he's a fantastic football player, a young, exciting talent. He got us up to the Premier League this year. I'm sure he'll keep us up in the Premier League this year. We'll pray for that later. However, my respect for him can only go so far. Where is, where is he? Tevin, somewhere in the room. I play football with Tevin every single week at Bridge the Gap. So I know Tevin very, very well. And yes, Tevin isn't going to keep us up in the Premier League. He's not going to play for Ipswich Town. Maybe there's, there's still hope, there's still hope, there's still hope. But I don't see that happening. But... Because I know Tevin so well, I can fully respect him. My respect has no limits, as I know him so well. This unlimited respect based on the knowledge of character is what we should strive to have for God. I want us to look at another verse um, around fear. So it's 1 John 4, 16 to 18. It says, God is love. Whoever lives, whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us so that we may have confidence on the day of judgment in this world we are like jesus there is no fear in love but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment the one who fears is not made in perfect love haven't we just been learning that fearing god is a good thing why does this pastor say that fear must be driven out by love if we fear are we not made in perfect love well, this type of fear in the verse is this worldly fear that we spoke about at the beginning. This fear, this irrational and unreasonable fear. Fear of things in an unhealthy way. So how does this worldly fear compare to our fear of God? Well, to work that out, let's break this verse down. So perfect love drives out fear. The love of God drives out all our worldly fears. When we fear him and live in obedience to him, we can be assured that his love will drive out these worldly fears. Uh, the one who fears is not made in perfect love. Uh, there's a verse in the Bible, 2 Timothy 1, 7, that says, For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. God has not made us timid. He hasn't given us a spirit of fear. He did this so we can worship him, respect him, fear him, but not fear the earthly things around us. So he made us in perfect love, so we should not fear the things of this world. It is good to fear God, but as we said before, it's not good to be afraid of him. Being afraid drives us away, makes us hide from him. However, fearing God brings us closer to him. God is greater than any worldly fear we could face. The fear of God draws us in, it doesn't push us away. Uh, a band called Death Cab for Cutie uh, wrote a lyric in their song, I'll Follow You Into the Dark. And the lyric goes, fear is the heart of love. I think that's really apt to what we're speaking about today. Our fear of God, our reverence for him, our respect for him is at the heart of our love for him. So how does our love for earthly things, our flawed love, compare to the love of God? As I said, our, our love is flawed. It's our, our earthly love of something or someone draw, drives us towards the fear of loss, the fear of losing that thing, the fear of failure, the fear of not being enough. Our flawed love comes with negative attachments. When we care about someone deeply, we worry about losing them, we worry about death. 
But we know that because of our faith, there, there should be no fear in death. Uh, in Christ Alone is one of my favorite worship songs. Uh, and, it, and one of the lyrics is, no guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. Because of Jesus, we know what's waiting on the other side. So our relationship with God allows us to see these, that, that this fear of death, this fear of loss, is nothing that needs to affect us because we know what's waiting for us on the other side. In case you didn't know, maybe it's your first time in church or you haven't heard the gospel before. Um, our sin separates us from God, acts like a barrier. But Jesus breaks down that barrier through his perfect love, bridges the gap between us and God and allows us to be with God together and not fear death. One of life's big certainties is death. But we know because of God's love to us, we do not need to fear death. This knowledge is an example of wisdom that we get from God by fearing him. And this, yeah, this fearing of God brings us wisdom. Uh, Psalm 111 verse 10 reads, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his precepts have good understanding. To him belongs eternal praise. Now wisdom comes from relationship with God, from close proximity with him. Relationship with him requires us to fear and respect him. Being close to him in relationship with him allows us to understand God's will more. More than if we approach his will with our earthly jaded perspective or look at his actions from our, our sort of jaded perspective. Fearing God helps us make better decisions and see God's perspective in life. And I wonder if this sort of wisdom from God, this proximity of God has made you make different decisions in life that, may, that you may have made differently if you didn't know Jesus. In my life... Um, in another, another universe, right before I met God, I used to be in a band. Should be a photo of it. That's me and my brothers. Um, I know, I know, really cool. I thought I'd be a bit of comic relief in the middle of fear of God. Um, so in a past life, uh, I was a pop star. I call it a pop star. Uh, we had a bit of a, fan, a following. God's, things, God's done some humbling since then. Um, but it came, we had, had some really cool experiences as a band. We got to be on TV lots, meet lots of really cool people. Um, met one of the Spice Girls. It's pretty cool. Uh, and uh, but it was e after every single gig or event or networking thing, I just feel leave feeling empty, feeling this thing of like w this this God shaped hole in my heart. It felt like um, there's an example of us being on TV. It was really really cool, and that was like a r real highlight of my like worldly life. But even after that, I felt a bit like, but where's God in this? And I had to and with relationship with God, I sort of asked him for wisdom. I was like, God, what do you want me to do? And I think my, my earthly perspective would be like, well, you're meeting loads of cool people, you're playing music for a living, like, stay doing this. But I felt God pull me out of that and say, I, I want you in ministry. And I think a lot of my friends who weren't Christian were like, what are you doing? Like, working for a church? I think I'm a vicar as well, which is really funny. A lot of my friends do. Um, and so they were like, why are you going to a church? Why are you leaving this really cool job? And I just said, I felt like God's called me out of it. And friends, that's the best decision I ever made. A decision made by following God's will, by fearing him. I know now that that was wisdom from God. My respect for his will, my fear for God, led me to that decision. Our fear of God brings us closer to him. It, it draws us in. And this allows us to have wisdom from him. Having this wisdom from God means that we can have better understand his will and have better perspective on the world. It gives us a perspective not jaded by worldly fear, but a perspective guided by God so that we can walk closely with him. Another example of sort of relationship being built through through respect and spending time with people is marriage. Uh, I've been married for three months. I'm looking at my wife here. Three months? Yeah, there you go. Three months. My wife's front row. Um, I've not been married for the longest time, um, but what I've got to know uh, is my wife very, very well over these last three months. To, uh, I've got to know how she works, why she makes decisions the way she does, the, the, those are the things that she does um, by spending a lot of time with, with Olivia. Um, I've learned to respect her and know her a lot better than when, we, than when we did when we first met. In the same way, knowing God allows us to fear him in the way that he deserves. Friends, I want to ask you, how well do you know God? How well do you want to know God? Does reverent fear of God draw you into his mystery or does it push you away? It's sometimes hard to see uh, what God is doing in tough situations. A closeness of God, a reverent fear of him allows us to better understand his will. God wants us to be close to him. He wants to impart his wisdom. He doesn't want us to be confused. God is not a God of confusion. When we spend more time with God, reading the Bible, being in church, spending time with, with fellow believers, we get to know who God is more. Another example of this sort of wisdom in God's presence is through worshipping together. Uh, obviously, what the main point of worship is to minister to God, but actually, this, I think a secondary function is for all of us to learn more about God. We sing these words like Waymaker, 
miracle worker, promise keeper. That's who God is. And it's as if we're listening around us with our fellow believers telling each other who God is. You can think of all the worship songs we sing here, and they're all the truths of who God is. And I think a secondary function of worship is that we, we can get to know God better. Press into God in worship. I encourage you, learn to fully respect and fear him. It will bring wisdom that only he can provide. Let the fear of God draw you close to God. Don't let the earthy things push you away from him. I spoke previously a bit about commands and instructions. Um, another biblical command um, is, sorry, fearing God is a biblical command that brings blessing with it. Um, Psalm 33, 8 says, let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the people of the earth world revere him. I'll read that again. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the people of the world revere him. All. This is a commandment for all of us. Wherever we're at in our faith journey, we are called to all revere the Lord. It's a commandment, but often commandments from God bring blessing. When we command to love the Lord, we see blessing poured out. When we command to fear the Lord, the Lord will pour out blessing. As we come into land, I just want to take a moment to speak about reverence. I mentioned reverence a few times. Um, what does it mean to revere God? Uh, well, reverence occurs in the Bible as the translation of two Hebrew words, yare and shaha. Yare and shaha. The root idea of the word yare is fear. So we've been speaking about this godly fear, this respect, this honoring him. But the root idea of the word shaha is to fall down as prostration of the body, to make ourselves lower. I think this definition of reverence is really instructional and really helpful. It kind of tells us how to fear God really well. To fall down in submission to him. So the fearing him and then falling down in submission is an instruction that reverence calls us to do. Reverence is making ourselves lower so that God can be lifted higher. I wonder, friends, what situations in our lives, what decisions we can make um, could lead us to choosing to make ourselves lower so God can be lifted higher, so he can be glorified. I'd love us to stand in response if you can. Uh, we're going to pray into uh, fearing God and reverence. Um, as we all close our eyes, I just have this real sense um, this morning that maybe it's someone's first time in church. I haven't been back at church in quite a while. Um, and just this sense of um, wanting to give your all to Jesus, to fully fear him, um, to take that step, um, to say yes to Jesus this morning. Um, with all our eyes closed, I wonder if that's you, if you'd like to raise your hand and I can pray for you. Great, thank you. Yes, God, thank you for the... Um, for the bravery, God, to step out, for people who are ready to, to give their all to you this morning. Just thank you for that, God. I think the second, the second thing we're called to this morning is that thing of reverence, that thing of making ourselves lower so that God can be lifted higher. And I think it's quite a... Uh, it's quite an instructional thing, I think, as we said, with reverence, making ourselves lower. So if, you, if you're able and if you feel called, um, would you like to make yourselves lower, whether that's kneeling or sitting, even lying down, um, whatever that looks like in this moment. Let's just spend a moment allowing the Lord to minister as we make ourselves lower. Yeah, God, we just give you our all this morning. God, may we make ourselves lower so that you can be lifted higher. God, may your will be greater than our, our opinion, God. May we love you with everything we have. May we seek to know you more in this place. May we be obedient to your will, God. And may we daily choose to make ourselves lower. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. If you feel um, the Lord speaking to you this morning, um, I'm not going to rush this moment, but if you feel the Lord speaking to you this morning or feeling something on your heart that you want to pray into, um, me and Shane will be on the side that we can pray for you. But um, let me just pray into our time of worship together. God, we come to you um, in adoration.
We come to you as low as we can, God, so we can lift your name higher. Less of us and more of you this morning, God.